Welcome everyone to the long-awaited deck profile. This is UPXD777 here with Nubatama. I'm sorry. I know it's taken a million years because I wanted to make this deck profile as crisp and good as possible. So here it is. <laughs> As you can see, we also have this lovely Zero Damage Gaming Nubatama Shurne Planet that I got from Zero Damage Gaming, obviously. Solemn Vanguard's shop. It's beautiful. I love it. Let's get down to the deck. We're going to start with Zero, and we're going to go up the grades. So, let's get this party started. With my preferred starter being the new starter, Stealth Dragon Burai. So, what Burai does, in case you don't know, is when a, dom when a domination vanguard, when a domination unit hits the vanguard circle, whether it is by stride or by ride, you are able to slide him into the soul to call a card from your opponent's drop zone and draw a card. This is mainly a card that you can basically you want to remove something from the board. You want to remove him from the board as quickly as possible if you're against like a control matchup since he's not GB restricted. And so he doesn't die like Madoi will every time you fight Kagero or Narukami or most decks that can snipe starters these days. So if you ride Great Reverse, boop him into solo, you draw a card. Basic advantage. You know? It's pretty good. Next, we run eight critical triggers, four of which are Torasada and four of which are Noroi. It's just resource management, resource management, and, and power. You know, pretty simple stuff with these. This is the Shiranui crit. Um, when your Vanguard Shiranui attacks, you send to soul, get 5k, and draw a card. And Torasada is act, sends to soul from rearguard. To counter charge. Pretty simple stuff. Alright, next we play four draw triggers. I find draw triggers to be important in this deck because you need your pieces as early as possible. The more draw triggers you hit, the better. Now, obviously, this isn't something you want to rely on, which is fine. But also, it's good for feeding the soul, which you do use quite a bit of. So, that's why I prefer the draw triggers because stand triggers don't seem. I've tried stands, and I feel like they don't do enough to warrant running them over the draws, because the draws have helped me out so much. So I suggest running the draws. But you can also do six crit, six stand, and you can run four Onibidoshi into Dharma Collapse. That's also a pretty solid trigger lineup. So definitely preferences in on that. All right. We have our Kobayashi's Dragon Maid trigger, a.k.a. our new heal trigger in Stealth Fiend Quisara Basara. Uh, we needed these heal triggers so bad. Because Counter Charge and Soul Charge is just so important in this deck. So I'm super happy we got these. Thank you, Bushi. Uh, next to the Grid 1s, I am running four copies of the Recycled PG Stealth Dragon Utsuroi. Now the reason I'm choosing Utsuroi over... Kurenai is because my build doesn't counterblast a lot or enough to warrant running the counter charge PGs, aka Kurenai. But I've had this skill go off more than it has ever gone off in this deck before. When I my last part, my first Nubatama deck profile, I was running Utsuroi. Um, and it like never went off. But now our domination attacks are so big, a lot of times they have to let it hit. And that's when these come in handy, because these are good ride targets. You can soul blast them with um, with G Guardians or with Shirinui's ride phase skill. And they get in a drop zone, you PG, and then they recycle. So that way you're more likely to survive after Rene turns if you can pull them off. So this is really good. Or you can use, say you need a struggle stride, do struggle stride with one of these guys. And you still blast out the other one somehow before. Like, maybe you're going to do it with one of the grid ones I'll talk about later. And then, after one of your domination units hit, which they probably will with how many you're going to have, boop, you get a PG back to your hand, and it's like you only discarded one for stride. So, 
another cool thing you can do. All right, next we play Four Stride Fighter. This is obvious. You want you want the best version of Shirinui in your hand at all times. Plus, I run a quite low count of grade threes, meaning Stride Fighter is even more important to be at four. So yeah, it's Stride Fighter. All right, next I run four copies of Stealth Dragon Ozai. This card is the bomb and needs to be at four, in my opinion. This card is so good. So what it does, in case you don't know, is when a dominated unit attacks a vanguard, you may soul block, you may pay the cost to reduce, which is soul plus one. If you do, that unit gets 3k power to end that battle, and then this unit gets 3k power if you have a grade 4 vanguard. So basically, this is the reason Mujin Lord is good now, and this is how you can force people to drop as much guard as possible. Oh, it's not hitting for a nice number? Now it is. Oh, it doesn't hit because you got a trigger? Now it is. Awesome card, and he creates mega columns when he boosts. So, really good card. All right, next we play three copies of no, we play two copies of Miss Frog. So, this is a good card, but I have one tech grade one that I like to keep at I, I wanted to run it too, but we don't have room, so I run it at one that I want to keep in the deck because it makes super awesome mega columns too. But what Miss Frog does, in case you don't understand Shrek, when you put him into the soul and a dominant unit attacks during your turn, you may pay the cost, which is sliding him into the soul. If you do, you draw a card and give that dominant unit 6k power. This is a really good card. It feels your soul. It feels your hand. But my problem with uh, Mist Frog is um, that, like, he's not a booster. He doesn't stay on the board, which Ozai and this next grade one does. So that's why I run him at less than four, which normally I would because he's a draw card. But I just really wish he stayed on board. But then I like that he goes to soul at the same time. But that's why we're not running him at super high counts. Because I want to be able to boost my stuff for big numbers. Which is why we run one copy of Stealth Rogue of Vista Ayagiri. So what she does is when dominant unit, another dominant unit attacks during your turn, she gets 5k power. So she gets big really quickly. And that's also, we have plenty of draw power in the deck. So we have draw triggers, triple drive, that counts as draw power, mist frog. Um, and then we have some other draw power in the deck that can get you to your one copy of Ayagiri. And since we're not a heavy control meta, they're not going to pop her too often. And I actually rather they pop her than popping Ozai or some of my other grade twos. So. But she's good to have in there. Sometimes they'll pop the grade twos over her anyway, and she'll just stay. So that works too. All right, grade twos. Would you look at that? We're still running 10k vanillas. Why are we still running, still running 10k vanillas? Because defensive power is awesome, and I'm sad that they didn't give us a effect 10k. I'm still salty about that. But that's okay, because these are still cool 10k. Shiriku Sari is awesome, and still Rogue of a Thousand Blades over Zakura is awesome. So, we'll take it. You know? 10Ks are 10Ks. Defensive rides are important. Alright, next. We run three copies of this new guy called Stealth Dragon Enbi. So, Enbi does whenever a dominated unit atta another dominated unit attacks during your turn, you may, um, he gets 5k power. I run him over Metsu, and this is what allows me to run the Recycle PGs over the Counter PGs, because this guy gets bigger. I have three dominated attacks in a turn. Like, say I use the ride face skill of Zonki, who I'll talk about later. Um, he'll pop on the board, then stride, then the, he'll get 5k from that. Then Zon then the strides will normally generate, like, two more dominated attacks. He'll get 15k power. That's real good. You know? That's real good. He gets really big. And with Ayagiri, it gets even better. Next, we run three copies of Stealth Rogue Liquidation. Sadatsugu, this is our other draw power card. So what Sadatsugu does is if you have a Shirinui Vanguard, he gets 2k power when attacking. And then Generation Break 1 at the end of the battle, one of your other rear guards attack the Vanguard will pay the cost. If you do, retire that unit that attacked and draw a card. This card loses the ability. So you can retire dominating units with this skill and then draw. So it's like a counter boss one to draw for free. Plus you're field controlling your opponent. So we needed this. This is such a good card, especially against Nocio Gize, because you're able to kill broken hearts. Dominate those, dominate those dumb broken hearts and kill them. Good stuff. 
Alright, next we run two copies of Ungai. The reason we run Ungai is to fix our opponent back at 11k, or to make it so that Bravest Victor Gra Grand Gallop is at 11k. Because he's a hard Vanguard to hit. Because he's like, oh hey, I'm a 13k base. And it's like, oh well now you're 11, so screw you. Um, even though I really like Dimension Police, and I want to build it. That's probably another deck I'm going to build soon. Especially with the new season coming up. Dude, Oh, I really, I'm, I need to make a video about the new season, but yo, I'm super hyped for it. Um, but anyway, Ungai. Ungai is really good. He's somewhat draw power because you ditch a card to draw a card, so you can kind of ditch a draw trigger to draw something. So, or you can ditch a 10k grade two to draw something once late game when they're not as useful. So, he's still a good card for that. But mainly, it's to put your van, your opponent's vanguard after they get triggers or something to back to 11k, so they have to drop more shield. All right, the grade threes. I run two copies of Obero. Look at those SPs. They look nice. So this is basically your discount Zanki, which is your new grade three. You run Obero because he doesn't cost a counterblast. I was running Stealth Dragon Shirinui. But I feel like if you're going to run Stealth Dragon Shirinui in this build, you would run the Counter Charge PGs just to make sure you always have counterblast for Stealth Dragon Shirinui. But I feel like Obro is just better because it keeps the domination consistent. And, well, it's not like I don't have Stealth Dragon Shirinui in SP. So, I mean, it's not like I can't run those. But I feel like Obro is just better. And it go he goes better with the Gs than I have now. So, yeah. And next, and lastly, we run four copies of Zanki. So, what Zanki does, in case you don't know is when he's placed on Vanguard Circle or when you stride on top of him, you choose one of the units on either player's field and it gets 2k power. And then if it's your opponent's unit, you dominate it, stand it, and attacks one of the other units. And then the skill I've been talking about is this right phase skill, which is you still boss one at the beginning of your right phase. If you pay the cost, you draw a card and all fighters choose a card from their hand and call it and auto abilities cannot be activated by the cards called by your opponent. So this card is amazing. This card and one of your strides is what makes this deck top tier. This kills things. This butchers hands. And I love it. Very good deck. Very good card. I love terrorizing my team, my friends, with this card. They hate fighting this deck. And while I'm kind of sorry, I'm also not sorry because I love this deck. So, to the G-Zone. As you can probably see in the corner, we're running two copies of Magun Tenbu. He's an okay first stride, but Marine is really your first stride. This guy's just to make mega columns later in the game, but you rarely ever go into him, so he just kind of is there for the most part. He makes a big he makes a big att domination attack, so that's why you can run him. Next, we run two Mujin Lord. So now, because of um, Ozai, this guy is way better because you're able to force all the attacks to hit as long as you have enough soul to pay the cost to do so. So, but yeah, Mujin Lord is great. He will decimate people if you ever get to the point where you can use him. Most of the time, he's just in your G zone. All right, the king of the G zone is here. Hello, my friend. This is the guy on the map. This is the evil eye Vidya Emperor Shirinui Rene. Look at this beautiful SP. Um, so what he does is act once per turn. You can count about one, choose face down copy of so persona flip him. And then their opponent has to call two cards from their hand, and they get dominated, and they both get 5k power. And both of those ignore resist because it doesn't target it just says dominate all and both get 5k so no targeting and then all dominate and then his generation break three is that all dominant units get 10k and a crit and also by the way the units call with his skill cannot activate auto abilities so they can't use any on call skills in order to cheese us out of stuff nah 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 fam we too good for you with that so rene Rene is the reason this deck is busted. You pull so many cards out of your hand. There is a point of hand. There is no reason not go into this first stride. So I usually stride the triple rare, flip the triple rare. This goes to the G zone, stride the SP, flip the triple rare. Gotta finish him with the SP. Or if you finish them with the triple rare, then you're like, 
Oof, you didn't even get to my SP. Scrub Lord. I'm not actually that mean, but this deck is that mean. So, this card is a must in any Nubatama deck, I'd say. All right, next we're running GB8. This card is still good. If they survive past Marina and you're at GB8, they're dead on this because you'll stride this, dominate one of their regards, swing at their Vanguard, use his skill, which is Generation Break 8. When an opponent's units play, when an opponent's units place on Guardian Circle from hand, you may pay the cost, which is Sky Boss 1 or Soul Boss 1. If you do, your opponent chooses two cards from your hands and discard them. So say they try and PG something. They try and PG one of your attacks. Before they pay the discard cost of the, of the PG, you can use this skill and they have to ditch two first. So, if they have three cards in hand, they place a PG, you can knock them out of being able to use the PG with Roku Shirakan. So, really good GB8. I, I run him all the time. We're going to talk about this card later. So, we also place a Breeze. Because it's an act skill. I have so many people who are like, what? Yeah, it's an act skill. Look at that. Act. You can even see the blue. Act. Which means I can ride, call some crap, stride into the breeze, and then punish. Really freaking hard. Because it's like, oh, they stayed in grade 2 for 2 turns and didn't re-ride? Alright, ride Zonkey, dominate, swing. Call my board, stride into, re stride into the breeze, dominate, swing. Str domination skills go off. Boom! Broken. Alright, G Guardians. Before we get into our last star stride. So I run two of the new G Guardian because God is this thing good. The only thing is you can get cucked by people who don't have high amounts of hand, but if they don't have high amounts of hand, they're not dishing out that much power either. So it bounces out. But if they have three or more cards in hand, this unit gets 5k shield. Then if they have six or more cards in hand, this gets 10k shield. So it's a, it gets, it's a 30k shield for nothing as long as they have six or more cards in hand, which most meta decks build a lot of hand power. Even with us ripping them out, they'll at least have six. So good shield power. Next, I'm running two copies of Gahorkan because pulling big boosters away from people is fun. Also, ruining grade one combo pieces is fun. The only not fun thing about Gehorikon is getting cucked by resist, but that's okay. I used to be running two copies of Zash Gihime, who is our unflip G Guardian, but um, GB8 is not as relevant in the deck anymore with Rene taking over the deck. So I bumped this guy up to two because I found him using more than I found me using Zash Gihime. So, since this deck isn't ramped to GB8 anymore and win, this is kill them with arena dot deck now i bet you're wondering yuki you only went over 15 cards in the g zone what could possibly be the last g unit mm -hmm -hmm. this is the last g unit say hello to serial dragon of inferno drachma we got our hands on one it is the SCR from GBT14, but I don't care because it's still full art and it's actually way more beautiful without the like pictures or like the Japanese writing on it, even though that is really cool. But this is the most busted card ever. And this helps against Nelsio Gize because it's like, oh, they're about to go into Gize. Well, um, Ultimate Stride. Rewrite that no CL or go down a grade. Yeah, they only run four grade threes. They have to search out the grade threes. So if we force the rewrite, we can delay. We can delay. Um, freaking. We can delay Gize and possibly kill them. Drachma's boss. Plus, if we don't kill them with Rene, with the two Renes, Drachma will kill them. So, yeah. That's New Batama. That's my deck profile. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was good enough quality. I feel like I explained things pretty well. If you want more deck profiles of other clans, I'm going to be ta I'm going to be talking I want to do a talk about the new season cuz it has me really hype. Also about my clan preferences cuz 
Well, I love this clan so very much. There is a clan that is pushing out Great Nature, possibly. Although I still love Great Nature. Uh, I think I'm probably going to do like two clans. Eventually, we'll see how that's going to go. But Nubatama is going to be disappearing for a while. Just because it's not getting support in the new season for a while. Which makes me a little sad. But we'll see what happens from then onward. But I love this clan. And yeah. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more quality content about Cardfight Vanguard. Like the video if you like Nubatama. Hit the bell button if you want to be updated on when I post. Even though it's not super often because I'm busy with work and school. But hey, whatever. I try. I really do. And I try and make the videos as quality as possible. Like these decks. Like I had this, de I had this deck like playable for a long time. For like a couple weeks. But I didn't post this deck profile until now because only now my feel do I feel like I've unlocked a lot of the good stuff for it. Like I've had the Renes and stuff forever. I've just been waiting for the Drachma and I've been waiting to find the grade three lineup and trigger lineup and stuff that I like enough to show you guys because I want this to be as quality as possible. I know it's been tough for me because I wanted to post the deck profile as soon as possible because of this beautiful mat and this. But... I'm glad I got it to you now. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.